this is a quick introduction to my implementation of Mongoose Traveler for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. And in this video, I'm going to take a quick look at some of the actor types that are available. So we can create actors in the usual way. And we have a number of options. And the ones I'm going to look at now are the Traveler, NPC and Creatures. So let's create a traveller. We'll create one called Alice, and Alice is a player character. So she has the full set of information um, on her character sheet. She has skills, equipment, financial information, a full biography, a history of all her career terms, and as well as a set of settings. Now, settings allow us to do a number of things, but um, they do allow us to select different characteristics if we want to, but for now we'll stick to the, the basic common six characteristics. So, if we're creating a character, we want to roll our characteristics, maybe modify them, or we can do it a quicker way. We can go to the chat, slash UPP, and that will roll our six characteristics automatically and we can take that and drag that onto our character sheet. We don't want to take them in order, we can take them and we can swap them around like that. If our GM is being particularly generous then we can roll extra pairs of characteristics. So. We roll, in this case, we roll two extra rolls, so that's eight characteristics, and we will take the, the high sticks. So we can take those, drop those on top, and we have that set of characteristics. Let's keep those for now and go look at our skills. So initially, what we want to do is set our background skills. We have the full set of skills already set on the character sheet, but we can filter those by uh, skills which are applicable to background skills. So we can choose three of those. So let's take Crowns, uh, let's take Drive, and let's take Electronics. And click off that filter, and we've got uh, back to our set of skills, like the skills which have specialities, um, such as Electronics and Drive. You can now see what all those specialities are, and if we want to. We can go in and give values to these. We could also set our other skills, give them values. I mean, obviously, you would do this as part of a more complete character generation process, but let's just give, give ourselves some skills and train a couple, and then we can filter by trained only just to see the list of skills we actually have. If you want to roll a skill, it's quite simple. Click on the skill, it will bring up a dialogue. Um, each skill has a default characteristic with it. You can change that characteristic if you want to. You can tell it to remember that characteristic for next time. Uh, I meant to select into there. Roll type, boon, veins. You can set the difficulty if you want to, and you can give yourself a dice modifier as well. We roll it, it will tell us our result. So we got a roll of 13, which is a plus five effect with a chain bonus of plus one. And it will also tell us um, the characteristic bonus and the skill bonus and any DMs, etc. that were involved in that roll. If we don't want to go to the hassle of going through that dialogue, we can just hold down shift and click on the skill and it will roll it without actually bringing up the dialogue. We can also take skills and drop them down into our hotbar, like that. And this will allow us to roll these skills without having to have the character sheet open. If we select those, we'll get a warning saying we need to select an actor. So if we go and take our actor, select a token, and then when we click on that, 
it will build that skill. If you have a speciality there, then when you roll that, it will roll the top level skill and also any sub, any speciality skills which you happen to have skill points in and tell you how well or how badly in this case you did with that roll. So we also have an equipment tab. So this allows us to add equipment to our character sheet. Um, so we could take a pistol, we could add that on, we could add on a laser rifle, we could add on a back suit, and these will all by default go into the items owned section. Now these are, this is equipment you own, but you're not actually carrying or using at the moment. So we could click on the suitcase, that will allow us to then carry that item. And we can see we, our weight carry total has now gone up. We also carry our laser rifle. That's a bit heavier. If we actually wanted to use a weapon, click on the fist and it becomes an item in use. And in the case of weapons, they'll appear in the sidebar down on the left. So you can automatically make attacks or ed edit the item from that sidebar. For armor, including back suits, you can click on the t-shirt to wear it. And you can see we get an armor box there, which would tell us the protection and radiation protection for the armor we're currently wearing. Now, this particular suit of armor, um, well, back suit, it's giving us a red bar along the bottom. And if we go into our skill section, you'll see we've got a minus three um, encumbrance penalty. So where's that coming from? Well, if we click on the edit for the back suit, we see that it has a requirement of a back suit skill of one. So if we go and train up Alice, we select back suit, and the penalty changes to minus one. If we give her a back suit skill of one, the penalty goes away and looking back at the character sheet, um, that red warning has gone away. Now, we can also track finances. So we can give Alice some money. Uh, we can also give her a pension and mortgage, medical debt, etc. We have a biography. You can set height and weight and where she's from. You can also set some a descriptive text. And we can also set her history. Now, this is what you use during actual career generation uh, for a character. So you can see that the current year is for this world is set to 1105. And we're bringing this character in at the start of the campaign year 1105. She's 18 years old, which means she was born in 1087. If we add a career, that adds a four year term. And that means she's, well, she's still starting the campaign in the year 1105, but she's 22 years old, so that pushes back when she was born. And if we edit that, we can set up information, we can put down, record what skills she got, um, whether she got any allies or enemies, and mishaps and events that happened to her during that career term. And we can add as many of those as we want. Now, we can also track associates if she obtained any. So we can click on, she gained a contact at some point, a rival, an enemy. Um, these will start with some descriptive text just describing her relationship to these people. And if we open up the, the contact, we can see we can change these um, and you can change the relationship type and re-roll re -roll those you can also add in extra details there if you want to and so that's a player character character sheet also known as a traveler so if we close her off go back to actors create an actor and we'll create an npc this time now alice likes talking to bob so let's create bob now, Bob, you can see, is a slightly different character sheet. He only has 
straight characteristics. He doesn't have a separate um, damage track for them. So if we look at Alice, Alice, when she takes damage, will take damage to characteristic. So to that, she's only that. She takes four points of damage um, to her strength. That will come off her strength and automatically calculate that. Bob, if he takes damage, it comes off a single hits total. Now, by default, the hits are set to the sum of strength, dex, and end, but it doesn't calculate them separately. Now, if we wanted to simplify things, we could set his view to be six, six columns, which saves a little bit of space, and he doesn't necessarily need as much space as um, a full traveler. Similar to travelers, You can set skills, set them to whatever you want. Uh, we can set trained only, and we can see his list of skills, and we can make roles for him just in the same way. He has an, an equipment list, much like a, a full traveler does. He has a biography, so we can give him a description, uh, but he doesn't have a finance information or history uh, because generally NPCs are, have a much simpler background to them than travellers do. The third type of character we're going to look at is a creature. Now um, some of you may have guessed we're going to name this creature Eve. Create a new one and Eve is, seems to be some sort of red ape. We can set behavior, we can set traits, uh, we can set skills, and creatures have a much smaller set of skills than travelers and NPCs do. We can set their number of hits they have, and we can set their size. So we, we see it's bigger than human, maybe it's a bit faster as well. Uh, you can see it's automatically calculated the dodge skill from it having a positive dexterity. We can add attacks. Um, attacks are just an item. You can also drag weapons onto it for, uh, for it to be able to use those weapons. And we can give it some natural armor as well. So maybe it's got four points of protection but it's generally a simpler view than what you get for characters and NPCs, but they will work in much the same way. And that's a quick guide to how characters work within uh, Monkish Traveller and Foundry.